Hey coders, hope you guys are having a great Friday so far. Chris here with episode 5 of how to build a shopping app. Now in the last lesson, we had listed out our products from our Molten store. And right now our Xcode project is connecting to our Molten backend and retrieving those products and listing them out here. So I've got three products. When we tap on any one of them though, there is nothing in the detail view. So that's what we're going to do in today's lesson. So from the master view here, when the user taps on a product, we're going to send that object over to the detail view. And then from there, when the view of the detail gets loaded, we're going to display those product properties here, the title, the price, and the description. So let's go back into our Xcode project right now. And the first thing we're going to do is go into the storyboard so that we can add all of the labels that we need in the detail view. So if you can't see what's going on in your storyboard, remember that you can always double click on an empty space to zoom out uh, so you can get kind of a holistic view of your entire storyboard. So we're gonna be working with the detail view right here. So let's double click to drill back in. And then here in the lower right hand corner, we're gonna search for label. Okay, and if you don't have this panel, make sure that this button here shows you that panel and we wanna be on the object library tab. So when you search for label, you're going to get a couple, well, it should be one element showing up. We're going to drag this label here and this is going to be the title. So here on the document outline, and if you don't have this panel, it's just this little button right here. I'm just going to click into it so I can name it the title label, just so when you have a lot of elements in your view, it could get confusing. Okay, and this was the label here that was by default, and they called it the detail description label. We can reuse that. Let's call it the description label. It's got some default text already. Detail view content goes here. I'm just going to change that text. You don't have to, but I'm just going to change it to description so it kind of matches what we are going to be using it for. And let's drag one more label here for the price. And do that and price. I'm going to rename that to price label. And then let's make the title label just a little bigger and bold. So under font in the property inspector, let's choose custom. I'll leave it font family as Helvetica. Uh, style is bold and let's make it font size 20. So an easy way to position these stacked vertically is to use something called a stack view. Before stack views were introduced, the way we would have done it is position this title label, maybe center it, uh, give it a offset from the top, and then center the price label and give it an offset from the title label, and then center the description label and give it an offset from the price label. Well, with a stack view, what we can do is put all of these three labels into a stack view, and with that stack view, you can specify how they're distributed. So let me show you what I mean. On the document outline, I'm just going to highlight all three of them. You can hold down command and manually click all three. And then click this button right here, which is going to stack them together into a stack view. Now, if you check your document outline, you'll see that all three labels have now been put into a stack view. So first of all, we have to position the stack view. So instead of positioning all three of these labels, I only have to position this one element and then specify how these three labels are going to be positioned inside. So I'm going to highlight the stack view. Now it can be a little hard to click because you might accidentally click these labels. So I would recommend that you click on the stack view from the document outline. And let's give it some auto layout constraints. So I'm going to click horizontally, center it in the container. So it's in the middle. And then on the pin menu, I'm going to give it an offset from the top, let's say 30. And from the bottom, I'm going to say something like 100. So let's add these two constraints. Now you can see that they're all stretched out. I'm going to update frames. And then we're going to click the stack view and we're going to tell it how to distribute these elements inside of it. On the inspector panel, you can see the axis is vertical, which means that they're going to be vertically stacked. Uh, distribution, we're going to say equal spacing. So that's going to make them equally spaced within the stack view. Now that I look at it, it looks kind of strange with so much space in between all of them. 
So what I'm going to do is just adjust the constraint of the stack view. Before I had put the bottom of the stack view is 100 from the bottom of the view. So let's change that. Let's say it's something like 400. And then we can adjust that a little later. So let's save it. And let's zoom out in this storyboard for a second here and check out what's happening. So you know that when we tap on a cell in the table view, it brings us to the detail view, right? That happens because of this segue right here. And the identifier is called show detail, right? So when we tap on a cell on the table view, which is one of our products, it's going to bring us actually to this navigation controller. And the root view of this navigation controller is actually the detail. So because we retrieved all of the products in the master view controller dot swift, right? This master view controller class, this is where we have all the product data. How are we going to send the product that the user selected to the detail view controller so that that data can get displayed? Well, when the user taps on a cell in the master view controller, this method gets fired, prepare for segue. So there's already some code written here. So let's go over that and I'll explain to you what's happening. So right here, it's just a check to see if the segue that's happening is called show detail. And that's the segue that leads us to the detail view controller. And then here it's checking if the user has selected a row in the table view. And if it has, it's going to assign that index path object into this constant right here called index path. And that's going to tell us which row that the user selected. Now here we commented this out last time, but what it's doing is based on the row that the user selected, we're going to go into our objects array and retrieve that object. Remember the objects array stores our product. Here it's casting it as an NS date by default because when the project is created, Xcode doesn't know what sort of object it is. So here, instead of NS date, we're going to put NS dictionary. Okay, and the next line is basically getting a reference to the detail view controller, which is the destination view controller. That's the view controller that we're transitioning to from the segue. Now, if you noticed back in the detail view controller dot Swift, it's actually got a property here called detail item. Okay. And it's a type of any object. So if we go back to the master view controller, we also commented out this line, which sets the object that the user selected into that property. So let's uncomment that. So again, it's retrieving the product that the user selected, right? And putting it into this constant object. And then it's getting a reference to the destination view controller, which is detail view controller, right? And we're putting that into a constant named controller. And then finally, because it is a detail view controller, we're accessing the detail item property and we're assigning into it the product that the user selected. And then finally, these two lines just sets the back button. So what happens when this object gets set into detail item? Let's go into the detail view controller dot Swift here in this property. When it gets set, this method gets fired configure view. So let's look at the configure view method here. Update the user interface for the detail item. So first it checks if there is a detail item and we know that there is because it was just set. And then here, this line, it checks if there's a description label and then it proceeds to set the text for that description label. So we're going to get rid of this stuff right here, first of all, and we're going to write some comments as to what we're going to do. So set the product product title set the description label set the price label based off of this detail object so how are we going to retrieve the title description and price from the product well let's look at the api documentation again so here it is the call that we made and this is the response and we can see for a particular product what sorts of key value pairs are in that dictionary. So we have title, right? That's the key. And that's going to give us the title of the product. We have the price, which we can retrieve here. There's also this other pricing property, which gives us a couple more options. So if we chose in our store settings to round it, right, we have a with tax without tax. And if we specified a price formatting, we can do that again, we can retrieve that price with the formatting sorry, with the tax or without the tax. And then here's the raw number here. And then there's also a description key. 
which has the product description. So I'm going to go back to the Xcode project here and I'm going to create a couple of constants that represents those pieces of data. So I'm going to say create a constant called product title equals detail and the key was title as string. Okay, then I'm going to say let product description, let's type it out, equals detail and the key was description as string. And I'm going to say let product price equals detail and the key was price as string. And finally, we're going to assign all of these constants into the labels. So right now, we've only got the detail description label connected to the element on the storyboard. We also got to add one for the title and one for the price. So we're going to jump into the storyboard. Um, let's zoom in. Let's click the assistant editor view. And in here, I'm just going to open up the detail scene under view. There's our stack view, and here's our title label. So I'm going to hold down control, click and drag it over here. I'm going to call it the detail title label just to stay consistent. Let's do the same thing with the price. Hold down control, click and drag. Let's call this detail price label. Okay, so now we're ready to jump back into the standard editor. Let's go back to the detail view controller. And in here, because this product title can be nil, we have to check if it actually exists. So let's use conditional binding. If let product, let's just call that title, equals product title, we're going to set self.detail title label dot text equals title. Okay, and here we're going to say if let product, let's just call it description equals product description self dot detail description label dot text equals the description and then finally if let price equals product price self dot detail price label dot text equals price now I just want to point out that there's a shorthand way of doing this if you choose to so we can say instead of first assigning this to product title and then checking if product title uh, has a value, we can combine this checking uh, and get rid of this constant altogether. So let me show you what that looks like. So if we just got rid of this line for a second, so don't use this constant, we can do something like this. And by doing that, you're basically doing it all in one line. You're checking, you're retrieving the title key from the dictionary and you're trying to retrieve that as a string and if it's successful then it's going to go into this statement it's going to get signed into title and go into the statement but if it happens that there is no key called title or if there is a key but then it can't convert it to a string it's going to be nil and so it won't go into the statement at all so i just split it into two so it's a little easier to understand for you guys but when you get more familiar with things you can combine it into a single line like that now let's run it and see if that works okay so we've got our products in the table view let's tap on ipad pro and we've actually got a crash so those of you who have worked with segways and passing data back and forth you may probably know what's going on but this illustrates a really good point that I want to take a moment out to explain. So if we look at the console, it says unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. So what's happening here is we know title contains a value because this statement, if let title equals product title, checks that the product title has a value. And in fact, if I hover over, it says iPad Pro right there. So what is nil? Well, this self.detail title label is nil. But you may be asking, how can that be? Because we've set the title label up here as an IB outlet that's connected to the title element in our storyboard. Well, the problem is that at this point, the view hasn't been loaded yet for the detail view controller. So this configure view method is called by this did set block of code when the detail item is set. And that detail item is set 
in this prepare for segue method when we do this. See, we're setting the object into detail item, which triggers the did set, which calls the configure view. And then it's trying to set some data to our labels, but the view hasn't loaded for the detail view controller yet. And so we can't actually access that label element. So that's why if you look farther down in the file, in the view did load method of the detail view controller, it calls self.configure view again, because at this point the view has loaded and we can work with the labels. So that is actually when we want to set up all of our labels. Well, we can just delete this line or comment it out. That would be an easy fix. So now when the detail item gets set in the prepare for segue method, that's not going to trigger the configure view method. However, the reason why this statement is here is because we want to detect whenever the detail item changes, we want to change these labels. And if you get rid of that, that's not going to happen. So instead, what we can do is here in our statement when we assign the title into the text property we can actually put a question mark here to do something called optional chaining and what that's going to do for us is that if the title label is nil it's going to safely ignore this part and it's not going to try to set the title into the text property of a nil value so we're going to go ahead and add the question mark here and here as well so now in the prepare for segue method, when we set the detail item and it's going to call configure view and it's going to try to do this stuff, it's going to reach this point and it's going to recognize that that IB outlet property is still nil and it's not going to try to set the text property of it. But then when the view has loaded, configure view is called once again. And then this time, because the IB outlets have a reference to those labels, it's going to set the text property for it. So now let's run it again and you're going to see if I click on the iPad Pro, uh, we can see the title. The price isn't showing up, so we'll look at that in a second uh, and we can see the description is here. So let's go back into Xcode right now and let's set a breakpoint at right here and let's run it again. And then we can use the console. So I'm going to click iPad Pro and we're going to use the console just to double check what is getting returned here. So let's say PO detail price and it looks like we're getting the price but it's contained in some structure. So detail price is returning an optional type, an optional dictionary with a key that says data with another key formatted and then with a couple of other key value pairs like this with tax without tax. So the tax itself here is 200. So you know what? We can actually drill into it and we can retrieve data formatted without tax, let's say. So instead, okay, what we can do here, instead of just um, popping in a key there to get the value, we can use a method of the dictionary called uh, value for key path returns the value for the derived property identified by a given key path. Okay, so what we're going to specify here is price and then you can use the dot notation to drill down and specify a path. So before we just had the key price. So this time we're going to do price dot data dot formatted dot without tax. Oh, there's a underscore there, so be careful. Let's do that. And let's get rid of this breakpoint and let's run it. And I'm going to click on iPad Pro. And sure enough, we've got the price for this product. In the next lesson, we're going to implement an Add to Cart button. And then in the lesson after that, we're going to do checkout. So we're near the finish line. Thanks for watching. Please share it if you enjoyed it. And please subscribe to get notified when there are new videos. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys on Monday. Bye for now.